you sometimes start to sound when you're maybe arguing with somebody who's quite progressive or left wing and like like how maybe the generation before us sounded when you might have said, oh, gay rights are a good idea. And they were like, oh, it's gone too far now. Mm. And now 20 years later or 30 years later, there's another issue, which is which might be trans or it might be the whole woke BLM thing. And we're the ones now in the middle going, yeah. oh, you know, do, do, does that worry you? Yeah, I think I think about this a lot because I am fully aware that being gay, for instance, I mean, trans rights and, and gay rights seem to be thrown in the same bracket. And I think that's possibly a category error. I suppose that's a whole different debate. But I, I'm very aware that in, in living history, being gay was pathologized. You had the the generation of people who were just fearful of something they didn't understand. They, you, you, you had the, you know, you throw religious conservatism in the mix. There was, I think in, in living memory, that you could get treated for homosexuality on the National Health Service in, in the UK, which is just, it's insane to me to think about. So I'm constantly trying to check my biases. I'm, I, you know, am I just becoming an old man uh, howling at the new thing, the new the thing, oh, it's just a trend, you know, keep, away, keep them away from my kids yeah. type of attitude that we're so familiar with from older generations and so that's why what i try and do is i try and lean on the science i i think one of the best things anyone can do at the earliest possible chance is just to acquaint yourself with the 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 standard logical fallacies or how scientific inquiry works and that isn't to say you'll never make mistakes or you'll never be misled or you'll never get things wrong you absolutely will but if you keep those things at the forefront of your investigations you've got a higher chance of getting closer to whatever is true and that's what i'm trying to do because you know how easy you can make life for yourself if you just swallowed everything the progressives put out there how how socially acceptable that is how how you won't have to face that very uncomfortable moment in a a group of friends where you put your hand up and say actually i'm not sure there are an unlimited amount of genders uh Mm. uh, you know you that's you suddenly smeared with a label so you know, if you just wanted a comfortable, easy life, I'd, you could just nod along to all these things. But again, I'm interested in what's true, and I'm certainly interested in what's true when it's deemed socially unacceptable to raise it or can lead to, you know, quote unquote cancellation, uh, loss of platform, livelihood, things like that. So I, I always try and check my biases. And obviously, the best way you can do that is by, you know, basic logic, first principles, uh, making sure that what you are opining is backed up by credible data or, and or science. But what's difficult about that, I suppose, and I, I find myself trying to trying to work this one out, is that, you know, you get someone very, very left and progressive who would agree that there are a billion whatever there might be. Um, a Judith Butler and a Noam Chomsky, you know, these are smart, very well-read yeah. people. And then on the right, you've got your, he's not even right wing, to be honest, but you've got your Jordan Petersons and people like that. These are all very smart, well-researched people with totally differing opinions about about what's right. So maybe there is, is there just no truth? Jordan Peterson is an incredibly intelligent man. He has a lot of good things to say. He speaks a lot of truth. He's, um, his output on the idea of um, freedom of expression and you know the, the the reasonable limits of that and forced speech and you know the work he's done talking about communism and things like that. I think that's all stellar and great. However, once you try and pin him down on the topic of uh, creator, he, he starts speaking like a postmodernist, which is something that he himself has been very critical of. Um, so yeah, I think one of the first, best things you can do is just disabuse yourself of this idea that. The religious people are just idiots because that you know, or someone who's got a different mm. political opinion is not very smart. I think that's that's making the conversation very easy on yourself. Ian Hislop's religious as well, right? Mm. So that's see, I, I find <laughs> it very very strange how. I mean, I I find it very strange to, that Peter Hitchens is very religious yeah. as well. Yeah, and because yeah. he seems to be someone who. Is very anti bullshit for want of a better phrase, and yeah. you know to to just swallow the gospel whole and not question that, and then be very um, assertive and, and lucid on other topics. I don't understand. I mean, it's it's that cognitive dissonance, isn't it? it can it has a lot to answer for. One of the many things that got you into the public spotlight was how you would correct people's spelling of atheist because it is quite a hard yeah. word to spell. But mm. now I think you probably tweet more about anti-woke stuff. So I'd be interested to know if you see yourself as both or one more than the other. And also, because one thing I've underestimated doing this podcast, because it, it does have all different sorts of people and there have been a few anti-woke people. But every time people message me going, what does woke mean? So I'd love your interpretation of what woke is, as well as mm. knowing, you know, are you an anti-woke person? Is that what you 
Oh. Yeah. So I mean, the atheist thing for me that was all that was it was almost like a gimmick uh, as a hook into a conversation. So what I'd find is some of the most anti-atheist vitriol you could possibly think of would always correlate with the misspelling of the word atheist on Twitter. And it would just be great fun <laughs> to pick this up, come up with some pithy response and and put the hashtag with the correct spelling, you know, um, I, I before we accept where there's no God kind of attitude. <laughs> and, and and what what interested me in religion and what I, got me into the whole anti-theism in a sense was the way I felt that conservative religion, and, I, and I'm not being hard on all religion. I have religious friends. I'm, 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 religion to me is not necessarily interesting, except when it manifests itself in bad ways. I'm not running around demanding to know which God people believe in or, or anything like that. But there's certain strains of religion, conservative, fundamentalist, that have a huge impact on, on liberalism and freedom of expression. I just happen to be a free speech liberal advocate. So th that's what I really honed in on. And then I, I kind of found that this new progressive, quote unquote, woke uh, ideology mimicked religion in a lot of ways. And I felt like a lot of tools that I developed over the years going for religion were quite useful in that sense. So, in, I mean, in terms of defining woke, I mean, really, uh, at its inception, it just it sort of meant somebody with socially progressive views, which I don't have a problem with. I, I would, I mean, it's become a dirty word, but I would say I'm a progressive in the true sense. I want an increase in freedom and rights. I, I want to make sure minority groups aren't oppressed or, or discriminated against and are afforded all the rights that I demand for myself. And um, where something needs to be changed to reflect that, I, I'm for it. So I, I would say I'm a progressive. But what I found now is woke's obviously used as a pejorative. And I, I don't think that's entirely unearned. I think a lot of people have wielded their progressive attitudes to smear and attack. I think their form of activism, if you can call it that, it, it is a form of destruction rather than progression. I think it can actually dial attitudes back in a sense because obviously there's always a reaction to these things and they, they do seem to be infecting. I mean, it's not... It's, I've always thought, how big of an issue is it? Is it because I'm swimming in social media waters that I think it's the entire sea? Hmm. Uh, and it turns out it is far more further reaching than that. We've seen it infest academia, uh, politics to an extent, media, TV, movies, music, award shows, everything you can think of now, there seems to be an aspect of woke finger wagging. Uh, hmm. And it does, it does feel to me like a very tribal way of operating it almost feels i know virtue signaling is overused but it does a, a lot a lot of the time feel like somebody's stating their you know progressive credentials rather than trying to affect any change or engage in in sincere discussion on the topic so i i think not only is is woke wrong in principle a lot of the claims it makes for itself on gender race uh, social cohesion i think it's very damaging to them causes so as a, as a progressive liberal i, I would oppose this new woke um, charge to the, you know, the progressive utopia that a lot of people, too many people seem to be pushing at the moment. So you would say, because this is what a lot of people come back to me with, because I complain about it. And I, I think as well, something I mentioned on your show um, was, was this thing of a lot of people are not that bothered until it happens to them. And I think that applies to mm. Anything, That's a great point. you know, it's not just wokeness, it's anything. And no one's bothered until it happens to them. It's very easy to go out and say, hey, I'm a great person. I believe in these progressive causes until you're somebody who feels that, you know, they've been told they can't have a job because of their skin color, because they're white, because they're male or whatever. And then suddenly that's, you care about it and nobody else wants wants to hear you talk about it. So, so where where is this all leading in your in your mind? You know, what what's the worst case scenario from from all of this? Oh, absolutely. It would be uh, some sort of white identity politics based nationalism that mm. will push back. I, I just think that's what we're going to see now. And it's something I've whinged about and warned about for years, uh, th you know, worrying about this coming over the hill because uh, and I don't think anyone writes about this better than Douglas Murray, for instance. I think in his, in mm. his uh, latest book, The Madness of Crowds, he talks, I think he uses a train analogy to the point where he says, you know, the train was already in this, almost in the station. We were almost there in terms of gender and racial equality, or at least getting society to a point where the the idea of colour blindness was a valued principle. And it feels like there's been an effort, or certainly the, the consequence of some of this progressive uh, pontification on race has caused a pushback. And you're going to see 
people behave in bad ways to this. And you've made some good points last time we had a discussion on this about, uh, you know, how, how further along the political scale some of this might make you from where you would have started mm. in, an, in an environment without some of this, uh, this uh, crazy uh, yeah. woke identity politics. So you're going to see a young generation of men now who statistically young white men in Britain, especially of my, sort of my working class background, uh, for that social economic state, so at the bottom of the ladder in, in terms of education and opportunities. I think they're, they're probably the first generation where that's true. I mean, they're, they're historically, you know, white men uh, have had it easier than minorities. I openly accept that, but I do feel there's been somewhat of an overcorrection to make it go the other way. So you, you're going to get a lot of young white men who are missing out on opportunities because they're told they're privileged uh, maybe they're pushed aside in favor of diversity quotas and they're going to be told they're completely defi defined by their skin color. That's the mm. be all and end all of their identity, something they probably would have never considered otherwise. And they're either going to reject it or embrace it. And uh, there'll be a lot of people who, who will embrace it and say, yeah, you know what? I'm white. Uh, and I'm going to lean on that. That That's my thing. Uh, and so what? What of it? In fact, it's great to be white. Look at all these great things about being white. As a matter of fact, maybe white people are better. And, and that to me is terrifying because we know how dangerous white supremacy is. We know historically what it's led to. And I would just hate to see any resurgence of that in any form, shape whatsoever, uh, especially at a time when it felt like that had been, you know, put six feet under. Uh, certainly mm. I've seen huge amounts of progression on that just in my short 36 years on this planet. 